I made the bed. That's not something I normally do. It's extra above work. It's, is it hardcore? Well, maybe, but I think we're entering into something all new. I think for the next four days, we're going into God Beast mode! Ah! First you got to take control, then unleash your God Beast mode. Phase one, one hour of housework, broken up into two 30 minute segments, beginning with laundry. While those are washing, up next, dishes, yeah. With this, now we're cutting K-Cups, Holmes. That's right, we get them ready for recycling. Yo, Holmes, what am I gonna do next? Clean the cat fountain like a champion. 30 minutes is done. I'm gonna feed the cats and move on to artwork. Notice the lights are on. Well, here I am at trusty desk. Trusty desk, strong like bull. Not really, it's actually a little bit rickety, but I can kind of fake, whatever. I've done my two hours of the four I wanna do on the horror. Let me show you. First thing I did was finished up this panel. I had started it yesterday. I actually zoomed in even more because I thought I was correct to zoom in, but it was a little bit too close to the size of this panel. So I zoomed in so it was more of a close up and I did flip it. I had had him looking the other way because I wanted him looking away from boots like he was not paying attention to her anymore. But I realized that it made it confusing since he's facing this way and you know, it just, it flowed better this way and I have him looking up and over and have her looking a little bit annoyed and I feel like that sells the acting enough and this sells the like flow of, you know, the artistic graphic flow, storytelling flow. I'm satisfying both things. You know, maybe there's a better solution, but I feel like this was a good compromise to make the two things clear. Then, and that didn't take me too long. Then I went up here, bum, 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 and the worst panel on the page, of course, exterior shot of the library, which I had not yet drawn. Uh, and I did this, theoretically it's two point perspective. I was gonna do three point and have it like be a big imposing thing, but I decided to go easy on myself. And it's not supposed to be imposing, it's a library. Um, and actually, if you look up here, well, A, I'm watching the art casters, but B, uh, this is, I don't know what this building is, but I found a bunch of pictures of it and I thought it looked really cool. And so I'm using that as my inspiration for the library. It just looks a little different, it looks, not like a building I'd normally see, and this is supposed to be sort of a semi-future world, but I also like that it's very structured with a lot of squares, a lot of small squares, a lot of these windows that aren't windows, and just things like that, uh, and different levels, and it reminds me of, like, a data center, like, a, of just, like, chips or, or storage, you know, lots of hard drives in a, in a, a stack and things like that, and just something about it seems very utilitarian and organized, and so that's kind of what I based it on. But obviously, you could see I did a completely different point of view, uh, and it's so it's not exact. And then I populated it with a few people, and then way in here, that's Boots walking up. And there's going to be a bunch of dialogue up here, probably covering up half that work. But I spent two hours total, and this was at least an hour of it, probably more, probably like an hour and a half of it, because this didn't take very long. And then I started this panel with the librarian inside, and that took me like five minutes. 10 minutes maybe. So it's one of those things where it's like, this is almost as much work as that. And it took me, you know, almost no time. Because perspective is poop. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my exercise in with a combination of going to the post office to mail some things. As I was about to walk out of the house, I realized wet clothing needs to go in dryers. Boom, recycling on my way out to the post office. Whoa. <laughs> First, you've got to take control. That's true. So let's see, while I'm walking to the post office, let's review what I'm trying to do. Um, it's not exactly the same as Hardcore Week. It's uh, a little bit more intense in terms of what I'm... Hardcore Week was just about hitting everything I could and getting ready for the future. Uh, this is maintaining the 100 days of making comics but trying to up the ante uh, overall, but specifically for a short period of time, being Monday through Friday, only four days. Why? Because when you're in God beast mode, you can't maintain it for longer than that. No, that's probably not true. There are plenty of people who do, but Friday is the beginning of San Francisco Comic-Con and then I have the weekend and I'm gonna be exhausted from that. And you know, I, I'm trying to be realistic with myself. But I want to put this extra, also something about having a time limit, like 100 days of making comics. Oh, that's not forever, that's 100 days. Oh, four days of, of doing God Beast, no, that's, that's only four days. So it's, there's something about I can give it my all. I could go super all out and like empty the tank knowing that I only have to do it for four days. Whereas if I was like, this is my life from now on, I would probably not be able to maintain. Um, so my basic outline that I made for myself, which will probably fluctuate a little bit, is four hours working on the horror one hour working on the horror standee and then the remaining three hours of the day are broken up into housework for an hour um exercise for a half hour dealing with business stuff i 
either a half hour, an hour, uh, and something else, which I'm forgetting. But basically, spending a lot of time working on the horror and then hitting other stuff, uh, and just having an eight hour work day um, with a half hour break for exercise while I don't have as much client work and I'm getting ready to ramp up for the convention. So, <laughs> but the, here's the problem. I, I'm not timing it as strictly as I do normally with like the 30 minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm not stopping and watching a TV show in the middle, but when I do get to good up to get a soda or go to the bathroom or whatever, I'm not stopping the timer. I'm using an alarm. So if I start at 1030, I'm done at 1230, for example. And that's fine. But in the meantime, like, I was getting ready to go out and do my exercise for the half hour. Forgot I needed to flip the laundry. So I did that. That took a few minutes. But did that count towards housework? Or is that lost time? Or is that digging into my exercise time? I'm delivering postal stuff. This is work stuff. Does that count as work then? Or is this my exercise? I'm almost dropping them as I'm speaking. Uh, and I did the recycling. So is that housework? So I think there's going to be a little bit of a flux there. The main thing is to hit the art goals of four hours on the horror, one hour on the standee, at least until it's done. And it would be amazing if I got it done this week. That would only be four hours. I do have the rough done, but I don't know if I could finish it in four hours, but who knows? But anyway, as long as I hit those and then spend the remaining three hours being productive, doing business stuff, doing housework, doing whatever with a little bit of exercise throw in, then I will consider it a success. Now, if I go over and do things afterwards, that's fine, but I just want to make like a full eight hour concentrated blast of nothing but productivity in all the different areas I've been trying to be productive in, specifically working on the comic. I think that sums it up well. And it'll, like I said, it'll flux, but the, th that's the goal. That's the goal. It's kind of like what Mike, Mike Emmerich is doing, but a little bit less structured and a little bit uh, more to do in a day because I don't have the client job he has going on right now. <laughs> all right, I better keep walking. Bye. Packages delivered. That post office just opened its mouth and ate them wide. Hopefully it spits them out in the correct place. Meanwhile, I am on my way back home. It's roughly a 10 minute walk from my development to here, but then, yeah, it's probably about a half hour total to leave my house, get here and come back, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I need a shower um, and I could let that slide for a while, except that I'm thinking I should leave the house and do an unscheduled thing, uh, which is go to Ikea. I need to go to Ikea to get a power converter and something else which I'm blanking on right now. And Q works from home today, which means I have access to the car. Now, I don't mind riding my bike, but I can't, it's too far, and I certainly couldn't bring home the things I wanted to in my backpack. At least I don't think so. So, I think when I get home, I'm going to take a shower, unscheduled. That's something I didn't account for. I guess I probably should have in time. And then I'm going to go to Ikea, which I could write off as housework, so that should be okay. This comes back to what I'm talking about, the fluctuating sort of timeline, where as soon as I started doing it, I realized... I'm not gonna be able to be super strict about it, but that's fine. As long as I get a ton of stuff done, way more than hard code, hard code, no hard code, hardcore, way more than hardcore mode, in God beast mode, as long as I maintain that ethic and get the art done and just fill the day with everything else I possibly can, then I'll be fine. And I'm not gonna stress too much over the individual details. I'm walking, I'm going to the post office, I'm taking a shower, I'm going to Ikea. These are all things I need to do. I'm gonna do them. And then when I get back, I'll bang out some more art. I'll bang it out. Just not more three-point perspective because, well, it was two-point. No more perspective today. Well, no. Well, no. I almost forgot another thing in regards to how things are sort of mingled together. I was answering emails. I was bidding on jobs through gig masters for caricature gigs, things like that, uh, while I'm walking. So once again, I'm sort of doing business while I'm doing this as well. The multitasking is good in some cases. I'm generally not a big multitasking fan, but when I'm walking and I can accomplish other things, then yes. Ah uh, yes, another thing on the list of things I forgot. Um, I This is business cards. I was almost out of business cards and I have a show coming up so I want to have some business cards. And I ordered these a month ago. And I'm like, where are they? They came a week to two weeks ago. They've been up in the office. I didn't get a notification or anything, uh, but I checked the tracking number and found it. So then they found it for me. But that just took me 10 minutes to do and that's another 10 minutes unaccounted for. So once again, kind of good that I'm relaxing on the what happens when sort of time frame for this day. Ha! Just shaved and got out of the shower. It's been uh, about an hour and 10 minutes since I left to go for the walk, so I'm, there's an hour gone doing things. I, I think I'm gonna skip Ikea. I don't think it's super necessary, and I, I, don't, I worry that I'm getting off track a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna just jump back into art. I'm, I'm working at it, I'm working at it, uh, but I am doing perspective, despite what I said earlier. Not as bad as the outside building, but uh, let me show you. So I was working on the background. These are populated with books and stuff and, and tapes and films, and this is like a multimedia library. I'm shaking the camera a bunch, sorry. 
Uh, and I got it all in perspective and it was all fine, but then I wanted to put boots in and I had her much too small and I realized, because I, you know, I drew her so you could see most of her body and she had a book in her hand. Let me make that disappear like that. And I had her a bit smaller so you could see most of her, but then I realized it wasn't quite working. So I put some perspective lines from the librarian here. Now she's shorter than him. So I lined it up so that, you know, her head kind of matched him and then squished her a little, moved her down to approximate how tall she would be in the background. Um, but when I did that, that's all you see of her. So then what I did was I'm taking this, uh, this is just foreground tapes and whatever, and I'm going to move it down like that so that you can see more of her. And I could even move it in like this if I want to, which is probably what I'm going to do. Uh, and then that doesn't matter. And then I just have to extend that a little bit. So yeah, weird perspective making furniture move. I've been at it a little over an hour total. I'm not done uh, with this two hour chunk, but I wanted to show that same panel I was just working on. Pretty much got it sorted and done. Um, there's gonna be a big word balloon here, probably covering up a lot of that detail again, but this is helping me understand the environment uh, where they're gonna be for the next couple panels or whatever. Also, when I moved this down, my horizon line was here, so then all of a sudden I needed to put a top on it because you would see the top since I moved it down. Perspective! Still working, and on to the next panel, which of course is more perspective. I don't know what world I was living in where I thought I wasn't gonna be dealing with perspective all So day. the rough I had was so rough I had to re-rough it. Rough, rough, rough. It looked something like this. Um, this is like the quick redraw over to kind of match what I had done in the previous panel and just sort of set up the reverse angle of what was in the last panel. So once I did that, uh, I, I was trying to figure out the perspective. And I realized the horizon line could be about here, and then I needed, it's sort of two point perspective. I thought it was gonna be one point, but if I do one point, this is super extreme. But if I do it two point, where I imagine the front is here, and it's coming in here, and then whatever. The point is I had two different vanishing points, so it kind of works, and it's, it's getting into that wonky perspective that isn't as straightforward as what I like to deal with. But what I did do is I drew this, and I did it in perspective to this vanishing point. Then I did not draw this. What I did was I duplicated it, and this is a trick I've done a few times. Uh, kind of like, there's a way to do it properly, like when you're using um, more organic, weirdly shaped things, like with people and stuff. But all I did was draw lines from a few key ports, the top, the bottom, and two others, to this vanishing point. Then I copied and pasted it, and shrank it so it fits, so the lines fit. And I could do this all the way down if I wanted to, which is the beauty of digital. It's arguably cheating, but I know there are people that do it even more cheaty ways. Uh, and when I ink it, I won't do this, but well, I probably won't do this. Maybe, well, who knows? But the point is I can you know, do hand-drawn over it so it'll have the imperfections, which will, not, which will make it not look completely duplicated. Although if I want it to be perfect and, and mechanical, then why not let it be duplicated? But the point I'm making is I only drew it once and then I just fit it into that and I could put whatever else I want here. And that's kind of a, perspective shortcut from me to you. My alarm just went off for four hours. Well, two hours, four hours total, but I think I looked at an email and farted around a little bit. So I'm going to give myself just a few more minutes uh, to finish up this bookshelf I'm working on and make my hand turn into a spider. Okay, so I put a few more minutes in just to round out the four hours, honestly, and also to just come to a more natural stopping point. Let's look what I've done today. Review time! So I enlarged him drew her, finished up this panel. Actually, I uh, shrunk his afro a little bit because I realized it was out of, it wasn't in design. Off model, it was off model from the other ones, there you go. Went up here, spent quite a while doing this. Uh, and actually I drew boots here, but she might, uh, I don't know, she may or may, now, nah, whatever. <laughs> That's uh, uninformative. I realized in the script she's supposed to already be inside, but it's fine that she's outside, whatever. Uh, then she's inside here. This is probably my favorite panel I've done in terms of the characters and the background and everything. And once again, I drew this whole background and he covers it up. And then I'm putting the lettering and that'll cover it up, which is something I've talked about getting final lettering at this stage, which is part of why I'm doing it more finished than I have previously. So that when I go into ink, whatever's covered the lettering, I just won't bother with. And then came down here and was working on this. And I sort of had to rough it and then re-rough it. Uh, and these guys were smaller, but I realized that actually in proportion, they should be bigger. They they maybe even should be bigger than this, but you know, they, I need room for balloons and stuff. And that's what I've got done in four hours. Finished that, did these two completely, started this one. So tomorrow I'll have to work on these and you know, hopefully I can get this page done by the, the end of tomorrow. So what's up next? The day's not over. We're still in God Beast mode. It's laundry time! The thing you have to remember about laundry is two steps. Step one, first you've got to take control. Man, sure God, That's step two. 
And we're back. We, me, you, us, together, right. So I just put an hour in working on what? The standee! <laughs> yes, the horror standee. The final brick in the wall that is my Kickstarter rewards. Why is it a wall? Because I'm keeping people out? Because I'm lifting people up. It's a wall from beneath. It's a platform to speak the truth or just tell stories in comic book form. Anyway, let me show you. So longtime viewers might remember this. I don't remember when I did it a few weeks ago, a few months ago. This is sort of the rough, and it's going to be six, seven, eight feet tall, I forget now. And so it's sort of proportionately sized to the printer I found. Um, I did this at 72 DPI, but the real one now I'm working at 300 DPI, which is still probably needs to be higher than that. But I it just can't. It'll freeze my computer. So when it gets big, the resolution will be a little low. But you're not supposed to be looking right on it. You're supposed to be from a distance anyway, so it should be fine. But anyway, what I have so far, probably you want a little bit of white in there, is this. Uh, I basically started inking the monster, the horror. I did uh, three levels of thickness of line. Uh, I'm going to have to go in with a little bit more detail. And also the color is going to fill in a lot of it. Right now, it's looking uh, very Jeff Darrow. I don't mean that to compliment myself, but just in terms of sort of the flat line, super detailed style. And a lot of my monster stuff starts that way and then veers off. Uh, and that's not intentional. That's something I noticed randomly one day that, you know, maybe subconsciously I did that or maybe it's just whatever. 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 Now I go to retrieve sustenance. Dinner accomplished. Now I'm going out. It, it seems late, but it's only like 8.30. It's, I feel that we're in the decline of the daylight savings, though, where it used to be, oh, it's just getting dark at 9, and now it's kind of starting to get dark at 8, which kind of bums me out. Uh, I do like that it's cooler, though. That's nice. I like the cooler weather. Um, I am heading out to the store to pick up milk. Uh, cereal and a few other things, but mainly stuff for breakfast. Now, I got up early today. I got up quite early, actually, uh, I think around 8.30, which for me is, might as well be the crack of dawn. Um, not quite on purpose. I mean, it served my purposes for the whole God Beast mode thing, but it was because there was a leaf blower person out front of my house, like every Monday, and I want to kill them constantly. They're the worst. Um, and then I, that's happened before, but I just stayed up since I was, you know, trying to get a lot done today. I should be exhausted, but I feel like I have a lot of energy still. I've hit almost everything on my list. I've put in my time, but I'm going to go do some grocery shopping. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to do one more task on my list, and we'll see how I feel after that. I did just have a gigantic soda with caffeine, so that might have something to do with my energy level, now that I think about it. Might be artificially created, like the sweeteners. I'm at Target. <laughs> no, it's decaf. I'm not a crazy fool. Q asked me to pick up some special K. I was getting some cereal for myself, and I looked up and down the aisle and couldn't find it anywhere. Of course, for myself, I got Frosted Bites with marshmallows, and that's to offset the cost of this Headmaster Transformer I'm picking up. Doesn't quite work out, but you get my point. However, I looked all over this aisle. Could not find Special K anywhere. Life is the closest thing I found. Like, I, you know, where is Special K? Then I turned around, and what do I see? Special K. Special K and all the health cereals and other things that I had no idea were there because I've never turned around in the sugary cereal aisle. Why would I ever turn around when I could see Fred Flintstone? To turn around and see... Ugh. I'm back from Target. I've done my shopping. I've put it away. I've brought it upstairs. Reverse that order. What am I going to do now? Well, one of the things I had on my list, um, and again, the play-by-play, hour-by-hour breakdown kind of fell apart, but was work on art in terms of studying. Uh, practicing drawing hands or anatomy or perspective or studying up not just drawing not fan art not client work but like hey let me put myself back in school for a few minutes a half hour a day um, I don't know that I'll be able to continue that forever but that was my intent for this God Beast move and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spend a half hour reading up with Mr. Will Eisner and comics and sequential art hmm 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 as you can see, cats are very interested in comics as an art form as well. Right, Boots? I'm still sitting here because I have cats adorning me. Um, I spent a half hour reading the book, which was the first two chapters, right up to chapter tw uh, page 24. Now, I've had this book for a long time. 11th printing, 1993. So, yeah, I've had it a very long time. Um, and I remember getting... I, I want to say I got it because Bart Sears recommended it. Now, Bart Sears... Uh, is a comic book artist mainly known for his like super 
um, I don't know if realistic is the word, accurate musculature. Like, he does a lot of really big buff people with, like, you know, every bit of anatomy, like, carved out men and women and stuff. He worked on Justice League for a bit. But mainly I knew him from uh, Wizard and or uh, there was another book like Wizard back in the day, comic magazine, that had sections like how to draw. And he had a thing called Brutes and Babes. And it was, you know, comic art advice, which uh, I loved as a kid, just soaked everything up. And one of, the, one of the times he was talking, I'm pretty sure it was him, one of the times he was talking like, oh, what books do you recommend? It was like, I know he recommended Burn Hogarth, which is like drawing dynamic anatomy and, and hands and drapery. And lots of people have recommended those books. And I want to say he also recommended this book. It might have been another famous artist that I followed. Um, but I remember getting this and a lot of art books in my like late teens, maybe uh, early 20s. And I didn't really do a lot with them. And I still have some of those books from then. I've bought a few since. And my approach with art books is to sort of like read a chapter or two, try to apply that knowledge, not look at the book again for months. You know what I mean? Like I can't sit down and read an art book. As evidenced by this, this was exhausting. Just reading for an hour. Like I kind of wanted to stop after the first chapter. It, this book, I mean, Will Eisner, he's a genius. He knows about comics. He's like the Beatles of comics, whatever. This book is boring. It is dry and verbose. And it starts off talking about basically lettering, which is, you know, not exactly what I wanted to hear. But although I do, I will say his integration of lettering and art is one of the things that he does well. And I don't. But it's especially, you know, when I was like, hey, I want to draw Spawn. Like the last thing I wanted to hear was about how I can use lettering to tell a story. Now, as an adult, I could appreciate it more, but it's still super dry. It reads like a textbook, which I suppose it is. But you would think someone who does comics would be better at storytelling. Um, but it, it's not. He uses examples of his work to illustrate his point, sure. But it's it's oh, it's boring. It's really boring. I feel better about not reading this cover to cover when I was a kid, because you know, as an adult who has a great interest in the subject, who's a professional artist, who's gone to art school, I still found this really, really tough to get through. Let me give you an example. He has a couple pages of preamble, just sort of talking about the history of comics and and him doing it, and that was fine. And then he has this page which shows art of this guy getting shot, them reacting, he falls and then he floats up as an angel, and it has the dialogue. And it's a great piece of art. Uh, it, it's perfectly using the form and the narrative, and you know your eye moves, and it's unconventional, and I get it, and it's great. And looking at that, I got a lot out of it. On the following page, he actually describes it, and he talks about how your eye bounces back down and up, and that's great. But before that, he describes it using English terminology that I barely remember. This is like the second page of real text of, you know, the how to draw comics, the Will Eisner way, which is not, of course, the title, but a description of the action in this panel can be diagrammed like a sentence. The predicates of the gun shooting and the wrestling belong to separate clauses. The subject of quote unquote gun shooting is the crook and Gerard, who's the guy who gets killed, is the object direct. The many modifiers include the adverb bang bang and the adjectives of visual language, such as posture, gesture, and grimace. And it's funny because he talks a lot about, um, in comics, how there's a lot of sh iconography and simplification and, and things needing to be immediately recognized and how it only really works if the person reading it and the person drawing it or writing it have similar shared experiences and worldviews and understand the same things. And a lot of what he's presenting, I'm not getting, because there was like a, a short story that he was talking about where this guy went on a trip and like, I, you know, I, I barely understood some of the, like, I don't, was this in the middle of a story? I don't quite get what's going on. Like, visually, I could see what was happening, but I don't understand the motivations or what they're doing. And then it's, like, weird tropes that were probably popular in the 40s and, and just that I wasn't getting things because we did not share that experience. We did not live in that same world. We did not have the same point of view, despite both being American comic artists. We're separated by 60 years in terms of when he drew that and when I'm looking at it, or 70 maybe 75 something like that so it's just funny that he's he specifically talks about how you need to have a common a commonality a universality on, on some level that it'll match but his was so rooted in the the present day and and new york city of what he was doing or and, and that he had this person traveling and part of my not understanding was because he was referencing things that no longer have meaning maybe not to, maybe somebody to somebody they do but certainly not to me and i just it was ironic all right, so that was some God Beast reading, um, art development, art school. I think I originally thought I was going to keep hitting that book till I was done. 
I think I'm gonna pick a different book that I haven't really read enough uh, and work on that. I, I also thought I'd do like YouTube tutorials or something, but I do occasionally look at anatomy and things like that, uh, and it's certainly worth doing, but I feel like what I less do is review this research material, these books that I have, and so I feel like I might as well get something out of that. So maybe tomorrow I'll pick a different one, see if that goes a little bit better. And again, not that I didn't get anything out of this, but you, you get my point. Well, God Beast Moon reading done. What now? So it's about 11.30 at night. I decided the next thing I was gonna do is catch up on some video editing. This is my Power Morphicon big review. It started close to two hours. Now I have it down to an hour and 25, uh, but I would say I'm maybe a third of the way done editing and it, I've been working on it for an hour, hour and a half, something like that. But just to let you know that I'm not just doing this regular. I'm not just doing this hardcore. I'm doing this God Beast mode. Here's how you can tell, because while I was editing and watching, I also had done some research and was working on a sketch for a potential new print, which you can't see. Hold on. Huh? Worked on that while I was editing. Multitasking beast mode. Man and woo man and other people. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure this will turn into a print, but it, it could. You know, who knows? Um, but I was drawing and I was practicing art while editing a video. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to stop now because I need to edit this video and still then go to sleep and wake up and do this all again tomorrow. So this is Gazbot signing off for day 55 of 100 Days of Making Comics. But it's also day one of four of God Beast. And if today is day one, but also day 55, well, then that means... How many days do we have left? One, a two, <laughs> times uh, 22.5 which means that we've got 45 days left. I also have three cats, just the two happen to walk over. This is bad math, but good cats. I should do this for 17 minutes. Three, one, two, red, black, and blue. Oh, stack them up, let's go. Trusty desk. Trusty desk. 